Hi, I'm Anna, and Azalia and I are very excited to tell you about our work on machine learning for chip design. Our motivation in this work was the observation that advances in systems and hardware have fueled massive progress in machine learning. And we believe it's time for machine learning to return the favor and transform the way in which we design systems and hardware and close the loop. Some key takeaways from this talk, we're going to describe a deep reinforcement learning method that is capable of outperforming or matching human expert performance on the task of chip floor planning. This method can generate uh, superhuman chip layouts in under six hours, whereas human experts take weeks or months at an extremely high cost. And superhuman layouts generated by this method were used in Google's latest AI accelerator, TPU, which was taped out earlier this year. And we recently published this work in Nature. So what is the chip floor planning problem? At a high level, it's just a form of graph resource optimization. So we take as input a graph of chip components, memory components like macros and logic gates like NAND and NOR, all of which are connected by wires. And the objective is to place this graph onto a 2D chip canvas such that we minimize various costs like latency of computation with the circuit, power consumption, area, while adhering to hard constraints like routing congestion and cell utilization. But this is an extremely complex problem. So compared to previous towering challenges in AI like chess and Go, a simplified version of a single instance of the chip floor planning problem has 10 to the 9,000 possible states. And there has been 60 years of research on this topic. Prior approaches fell into three broad categories, partitioning-based methods like min-cut, stochastic or hill-climbing-based approaches like simulated annealing, and analytic solvers like the prior state-of-the-art replace. And in this work, we propose a fourth category of approach, learning-based methods. So more specifically, we take a deep reinforcement learning approach to the chip floor planning problem, where we train an agent to place the nodes of this chip netless graph one at a time onto the canvas. And after placing all these nodes, we get an approximate reward signal that we use to punish or reward the policy and get better and better at placing chips over time. So just to make this a bit more concrete, at each time step, the state is a representation of the chip netlist, a representation of the current node to place next, and a representation of the canvas onto which we need to place that node. The action is the decision about where to place that node onto this grid, and the reward is, after placing all the nodes, a weighted average of approximate wire length density and routing congestion. And in this work, we take a hybrid approach to placement optimization. So the RL agent places the macros, or these larger memory components, onto the canvas, and then we use a force-directed method to place the standard cells so that we can quickly evaluate the quality of this placement. So here are some results on a TPUV4 block. Unfortunately, we have to blur these images due to confidentiality, but the white regions are macros, the green regions are clouds of standard cells, or logic. And as you can see from this image, the machine learned placement has this more rounded, organic looking placement, whereas a human expert placement has a very rigid looking shape. And the interesting thing here is that this rounded shape actually allows the machine learned placement to minimize the wire length needed to connect the macros or memory components to the logic in the center. And the human expert placement took six to eight weeks to generate, uh, whereas the machine learned placement took only 24 hours. And we've actually significantly reduced the runtime of our methods since then, and we can now generate placements in under six hours. And that's all he's going to tell you a little bit more about how we achieved that. Thanks, Anna. So one of our goals in this project was to be able to train policies that generalize to new unseen chip blocks. So basically, we want to train policies that uh, on a set of chip blocks. And once they are trained, we want to use them to quickly generate a high quality placement on unseen chip blocks. To this end, we started with just doing the most basic thing, and that was to train a policy on a family of chips and then use it right away on a new test chip. And that didn't really work well. We tried other tricks like freezing different layers of the policy and fine tuning it on the new chip block. And that didn't work either. What ended up working in this case was to take a supervised approach to the way we designed the encoder architecture for this policy. Uh, what we observed was that the value net that we had for the policy was not able to generalize to, to new chips in a way that it was not able to predict the quality of placement, such as wireland, congestion, and such, or the unseen chip blocks. So we tried to focus on this problem of supervised prediction of the reward function first. What we did was uh, develop a training data set with 10,000 different placements uh, across five chip blocks. Uh, and these placements had 
varying degrees of quality in terms of like violence, in terms of congestions, some were better and some were worse. And then we developed a new architecture heavily focused on the representation of these chip net lists. So basically on the input side, uh, we would get a representation of the canvas and the placement so far, the new macro that is going to be placed, and also a, a representation of the net list and the, all the edges and the connections uh, between the nodes themselves. And on the output side, you are going to predict uh, congestion and uh, violent metrics. We tried existing graph neural net architectures and they didn't work really well for us. And what we ended up doing was developing a new method which heavily focused on edge representations. So we explicitly assigned weights to be learned for edge embeddings. So we simultaneously updated the node and edge representations. Eventually this graph representation uh, was able to predict violent and congestion well. And in this slide, you can see uh, how these predictions work. Basically, once we had this uh, representation that was really well at predicting the reward function, what we did was taking that architecture, placing it on the encoder side of the policy, and then on the decoder side, we used a multi-layer of deconvolutions uh, in order to kind of predict the uh, actions. In this case, was where to place a new macro. Uh, we also used a uh, mask uh, which was very important for the policy to train. And what the, what the mask uh, function did was basically to uh, allow the policy to only choose actions or placements that were feasible at that point. Uh, for example, if a macro uh, is going to have overlap with an existing macro, that action is no longer feasible. So with this mask function, we could really enforce that. In this animation slide, we are basically showing how this generalization work. Uh, on the right side, we have a policy that is pre-trained on a set of netlists, and we applied it directly to a new netlist, in this case, a risk 5 Arian block. On the left side, uh, we are training this policy from scratch for the same block. And what you can see here is that the policy trained from scratch, it takes a while for this policy to come up with optimized placements, whereas on the right side, Right in the beginning, the pre-trained policy knows to assign a space in the middle for the standard cells and place the macros, and those are the small squares you see on this slide, on the peripherals of the canvas. So what's happening here is that the pre-trained policy actually learned how to deal with this new netlist really well, really quickly. So here is a slide showing how this pre-trained policy helps us achieving better results and also achieving those faster. In this case, for example, we are getting optimized placement more than 30 hours faster than the policy that is trained from scratch. Here is another slide that kind of encourages us to extend the pre-training on more and more netlists. The policy that is trained on 20 blocks in this case uh, can achieve optimized res results much uh, quicker than, than the other two policies that are trained on a smaller set of blocks. And this is really a unique property that deep learning and representation learning in this case is uh, helping us uh, observe because None of the existing methods to placement can really become better as they solve more instances of the problem. And uh, the good thing is the number of chips that we are placing is only uh, going to increase over time. In this slide, we're comparing our method to prior uh, academic state-of-the-art method and the uh, true prior state of the art, which was uh, the manual baseline, a team of physical design experts generating these placements uh, on uh, TPU blocks. What we see here is that we compare favorably uh, to the manual design, and uh, we can do so in under six hours using automated methods, whereas the baseline takes several weeks and requires human experts in the loop. So to summarize, uh, we developed a new deep reinforcement learning method for the uh, task of chip floor planning. Uh, our method converts in under six hours. Uh, it was already productionized. We re recently published this work in Nature, uh, and this work generated a lot of interest, and we think this is just the beginning, and the whole process of chip design can really be transformed with deep learning. Thank you. Mm -hmm.